Okay, I'm going to do a quick update on um, my Raspberry Pi setup. Um, I've quite literally just reinstalled um, RaspBMC. As you can see that latest version um, using the Windows installer. Sort of the user interface installer. I don't know if you can get a bigger picture. Um, pretty simple. Put your SD card in. Uh, it now gives you the option to install through USB device um, or USB stick. And also run RaspBMC over a network file share, which is kind of cool. Um, I left both of them unticked because I've speed tested my USB sticks and they don't actually measure up to the SD card. So I've kind of left them out. So I've quite let you just fired it up. Got a new monitor. Raspberry Pi sits at the top there. Um, the usual connected by HDMI. Uh, got the mouse plugged in just to show you around the interface a bit easier. But uh, HDMI plugged in, Ethernet plugged in, class 10 SD card. I think it's a 16 gigabyte. And then uh, the power, which I can use the monitor because this new monitor has the USB plugs on the side. So I can put that in and turn on the Raspberry Pi. Okay. So now we're into uh, the interface. Nothing has been added. I have no sources added. I haven't touched it. This is a fresh install. The only thing I have done uh, previously to starting this recording is go across to programs and down into Rust BMC settings. Nightly build. You can switch between versions, but as this is a fr fresh install, this should be the latest version. You can check by going into uh, the nightly builds and install XBMC nightly. And you can choose either one of these two. I believe I should be on the latest one. I'll cancel that for now. I'll just show show you around the, the basics, the updated version. But um, yeah, so you can go into programs. Uh, from my previous video, they've added a few new features. Um, chief among which is in the settings. You can go here to system configuration, and you have a remove user interface res limit. So previously on my old monitor, I couldn't run 1080p. Um, and it turns out even if I was able to run 1080p, what would happen is the actual whole interface will only be in uh, 720p format, so it would be scaled across. So now you have the ability to actually run it in 1080p, make the menus clearer, make pretty much using around it a bit more clear. Um, and said that's that's now a feature that you can force on, and you can choose to. To turn it on it says read the frequently asked questions I've not really read that myself but um, also got uh, licenses so you can activate and codex um, again I haven't used that the thing I've done uh, previously before recording is change the system performance profile and what this does is it actually overclocks your um, Raspberry Pi to a safe level Normal usually sits, I believe, around 800, and then core clock is about 250. Um, so what's done, I've put onto the fast profile, which has moved it from 800 up to 840 uh, CPU clock speed, and uh, the core clock speeds are gone from 250 up to 350. So nice, quick performance increase. I believe that might have changed ever so slightly as well. Um, pretty much means you get a nice, fluid uh, experience as a, as compared to uh, the first video I've done which did seem a bit clunky in places so you have got the ability to go to a fast profile um, there is also a super profile I believe this actually works better if you install um, RaspBMC to the USB when you're first creating your image um, 
again speed test your USB devices see if they actually are worthwhile because what would happen if you put into super your clock speeds and stuff will go up again but um, you are more likely to corrupt the image and the, the cards are more likely to corrupt uh, running off a, uh, off a uh, SD card alone so you definitely need a USB in there to help you out and even then you still take the risk of either I don't know a shorter lifespan on your Raspberry Pi maybe um, they do seem, seem to take this pretty this is very stable on the profile I'm on at the moment I've not really tried super because I don't really want to go through all the effort creating uh, folder names and stuff and then having all the artwork grabbed only for the Raspberry Pi to corrupt the card and you have to start all over again so fast I've left it at it seems absolutely fine it's a hell of an improvement um, nothing else down there really uh, maybe a few options for Sambas and FTP ser server supports and stuff but yeah this is the main bit I'm interested in so again this is my first setup um, everything's same as before I don't think there's anything too exciting in this menu um, live TV I can't really remember if that was there before I think now it supports PVR, so you can record live TV. Um, again, with Raspberry Pi, I'm not quite sure how you do that, but something, some capture cards are bound to be supported by now. So, yeah, you've got different power options there. Let's have a quick look at this. Um, weather, I'm not too interested. You can disable that really. Weather underground in the UK doesn't seem to work, at least for me. So I'll select none. I don't tend to use that anyway. Um, again services this would be the same setup as last time to get a remote working on an Android or iPhone so you need to make sure you can do UPnP and I'll do that as well again exactly the same port um, mine has actually changed from 80 so mine is 8898 be able to leave it as 80 but I know 80 is used on my router setup so I'll leave that as it is uh, allow that airplay and there you go the resolution now is supported at 1920 by 1080 um, the previous build, again I don't know whether that was down to the actual build or my old monitor but I believe it was to blame on the old monitor because um, I did try it on uh, a high definition TV and it works fine at 1920 by 1080 so yeah it runs absolutely smooth as I said a lot smoother um, navigating around at least and I'll get to showing you some content and stuff once that's all added but this is a pretty fresh start for me. You have to recreate your image, so you lose all your settings and your, um, your movie information and stuff, and your sources. So you need to redo this. Um, just worth checking over your uh, your system. I'm actually going to change the, the. What I found is uh, going through HDMI downstairs. I could configure it to 5.1 uh, as long as I was going through my amplifier setup. But at the moment on this monitor it's only stereo. So the current situation with my monitor is uh, it does have HDMI input and this is what it's connected to on the Pi um, but it doesn't have a speakers on it itself. It has a uh, headphone jack on the side so I can leave this as stereo, analog and stereo. Um, bring that back to 2.0, there you go. So makes it nice to listen to any 5.1 content it downscale into stereo and also uh, just boost the boost the sound up so input devices uh, my controls and keyboard presses now I have the option for um, touchscreen support which is kind of interesting so I believe mouse was the only option last time on the previous build so keep that enabled Oh, this is the uh, proxy to access the internet. 
don't believe you need this unless you're setting up your own um, internet connection you have all the information available usually uh, it would pick it all up automatically if you're connected by Ethernet so I'll leave this alone power saving functions uh, again don't really need those Again, looking at system information, um, still shows this bar drawing quite high CPU usage, but the CPU is working hard to draw this in real time, so that that's pretty ironic that you're seeing full CPU usage, even though it's not actually doing anything apart from drawing this bar. So don't don't worry about it. You can't really monitor unless you um, do a little uh, command to see your CPU usage and what's going on inside the recipe pie, but that. That's never actually running at 95%. Again, uh, a bit more memory left from last time, I believe. I'll have to double check that. But it does show that it's running full HD at 60 hertz, and it's running around 50 frames. It goes up to about 56 in some places. So, pretty good frame rate. And again, opens uh, pretty standard here. Storage. That's my SD card network information uh, video information GPU temperatures 120 degrees Fahrenheit and change that to Celsius um, within a setting somewhere I believe but again it's pretty cool it's been, it, it was on for a while while I was tinkering with it um, and this is running the fast profile so doesn't seem too bad um, yeah most of it is pretty standard Hardware, CPU temperature, total memory, free memory, yeah, all looks good. I said the the immediate thing you will notice once you change it to a fast profile is how fluid everything is. Oh, first run help, I've not seen this before. So ideally I need a keyboard to show you, which I've not plugged in. Yeah, you can take my word for it, it's a damn sight smoother than last time. So again, I'll need to add my content yet again, so I may as well cover the basics on this. 